Welcome back guys. So in this part we're going to go ahead and cover a few small fixes that you need to do to make your map function fully. And we're also going to cover a few techniques to make certain things like kinked rails function smoothly in the game. The first fix, and this is a very important one, is we need to fix our tags and layers. This is only an issue if you imported the asset rather than opening the file which is why opening the file is recommended. But if you imported the asset, go ahead and watch this segment of the video. If not, there should be a timestamp in the description of to skip to the next part for those of you who only open the file and don't have this issue. So we're here in our sample scene where we're creating our map, and we need to fix a couple small things before we can keep going forward. The first thing is we need to create a grindable layer. So we're going to go add layer, and under layer 12, we're going to create layer grindable. If you imported the asset, you won't have this layer and you'll need to create it. Once you create that, however, everything that was on the grindable layer when imported will automatically override itself to that layer. So all you have to do is add the layer and Unity will do the rest for you. The other thing we need to do is we need to fix the grind tags, which for some reason it deletes the wood tag but keeps the metal and concrete tags, but puts them in the wrong order when you import the asset. I could not tell you why this is a thing, but we do need to fix it. So this is easiest if we do it before adding any objects, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete all this stuff really quickly. And we're going to go tags, add tag, and we're going to remove these tags. So once we remove those, we're going to hit reset, and then we're going to add tag zero is concrete and it has to be in this order or it won't function properly. Tag two, or tag one I guess, is wood, and then our final tag is metal. If we go ahead and re-import our rail, you will see that it is all fixed. So to create a perfectly aligned kink rail, we're gonna import our down rail and rotate it by 180 so that it aligns with our flat rail. I'm trying to create a flat down flat rail like you can see in the demo map, and as you can see, with ProGrid, this doesn't align perfectly. This is my fault. It's because of the way I modeled these rails and I'm not gonna fix it for the time being. So we can just use our vertex alignment by holding V to align that with the previous rail. Duplicate this rail, move it somewhere near, and do the same thing once again. And there we go. We have a perfectly aligned flat down flat rail. Now, the issue with this flat down flat rail is that each one of these prefabricated rails comes with a grind spline, which is great when they're individual items, but when you try to link them all together, this causes a problem because Skater XL does not like having a grind, and then a separate grind, and then another grind. Your skater will bug out and have a pretty bad time. The fix, however, is pretty simple, and I'm going to cover that right now. Step one is I'm going to go ahead and just organize my three rails. And then in the rails folder that I've created, I'm going to create another empty. I'm going to call this FDF. This is my flat down flat rail. And I'm going to move all three of these inside of the FDF folder. The next thing I'm going to do is inside of the FDF folder, we're going to create another empty. We're going to call this grind. And now I'm going to take these three items. And I'm going to unpack the prefabs and then use right arrow to open all three. I'm gonna take, by holding control, I'm gonna select all three of these grind objects and place them under their parent grind object. The final step is on these three grind objects, I'm gonna remove the spline computer and instead I'm going to add a spline computer to the parent grind object. I'm gonna set the tag to metal and make it grindable, whoops, not UI. I'm gonna make it grindable and I'm going to set it to this object only, although in this case it doesn't matter because the children are already grindables. And now we can go ahead and set our space to local, our type to linear. Space can also stay global, but if you move the object after creating this spline, the spline will only move with the object if it is set to local, not global. And now I'm going to go ahead and set up my grind spline just like I would any other time using Dream Tech. Because I'm doing this, the game will read one single long continuing grind spline and it will grind much 
smoother and hopefully seamlessly. Just like in my Dream Tech Grind Spline tutorial, which you can watch for a little more information, I'm going to go ahead and set my normals to where they need to be. So I'm going to set all of them to up, and I'm going to select these two that are on the down slope, and I'm going to make sure that they are properly aligned along the appropriate axis with the rail by just sliding this Z slider while having those selected. And now if we select all, as you can see, these normals are set to up, these ones are set to the down rail, and these ones are set to up again. If you don't know how to use DreamTech grind splines, which you probably don't if you're using this tool, go ahead and watch my video covering them. It's only five minutes long and it goes into a little more depth on how they work and how to use them. But now that we've gone ahead and put one parent grind spline on all of these, on this grind, all three of these rails are connected seamlessly. Kinked ledges are gonna work the exact same. In fact, any kinked grindable object and really any grindable objects that you wanna connect should all be like that. For instance, if I wanted to add another flat rail here, I would have to extend this grind out by doing exactly what I just did. For instance, if I wanted to have another flat rail, I would have to take the flat rail grind and our flat rail, duplicate both of those. This will stay here. I will move it all over. And then I would extend the grind spline from here all the way to over here. This process might seem a little daunting at first, but once you start getting the hang of it, it's fairly quick and painless, and especially using DreamTech, this makes for the smoothest and most functional splines, and your grinds will function far better if you take the time to do this. And now we can collapse all that, and our flat down flat rail is now created under one parent object. And that's all we need to cover on fixing small issues that come with the creator. It's all fairly quick and easy, but unfortunately it is necessary because of the functionality of Unity and Skater XL's physics as a whole. The, f the final thing we're gonna cover in this video is now we're gonna build our map. And this step is super easy, which is why I'm just sort of tacking it onto a separate video in this tutorial series. All we need to do is go to our sample scene click on the scene, go to down here in the bottom right where it says asset labels, we're gonna click where it says none, create a new, we'll call this tutorial level, and now we can right click on sample scene and click build asset bundles. And once that's built, it's just like in that first video where we looked at the asset bundles folder, you want the asset bundle that is in this case called tutorial level dot file, and you drag and drop that into your maps folder. And that's it. From here on out, it's up to you guys. Take your creativity and go wild with it. Hopefully in the near future, people will be releasing some asset bundles that go with this after I get around to creating the tutorials on how people can do that. And you'll be able to download and install new asset bundles with more rails, ledges, ramps, scenery, etc., etc., to add into your maps. For the time being though, the baseline stuff is plenty to create a decent starter map and get you working in Unity for the first time. Let me know if there's anything else that you have questions on. I can always add more tutorials to this series, but I think for starters, this is a pretty good way to go. And hopefully this is enough to get you guys beginning on your journey of creating maps. All right, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the tool. Let me know what you think and have a wonderful day. Thanks, bye.